Hi guys, this is a fairly short PowerPoint, but a tricky little lesson. It, uh, it relies very heavily on the knowledge and skills that you guys obtained doing the um, combination circuits work. Okay, so um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our circuits, do some more circuit calculations, understanding that there is resistance as a result of the conductors that we use to build the circuit as well. Okay, so line drop, line loss, and then this whole conversation is about efficiency. Power in compared to power out. Okay, now of course the power out is going to be the total power in, but some of it is going to be at the electrical loads that we've placed in the circuit, which is the desired outcome, and that's what we're measuring, compared to the power output from the resistance offered by the wire, which is just heat being generated by the wire, and that is the loss. Okay, so that is the inefficiency in the circuit. Okay, so we're going to compare the power output of the loads compared to the power input from the power supply. So we will get to that. Let's move forward here. So line drop or voltage drop is the voltage dropped in the conductor due to its resistance. Okay, so we've been using the term voltage drop all along, talking about the voltages dropped across the resistors, across the loads. Okay, when we talk about the voltage dropped across the resistance of the conductor, we call that typically line drop. Okay, we'll look at that. And then line loss, and it's, it's both of these line drop and line loss are a result of the same thing, the resistance of the conductor. But the line drop or voltage drop is about the voltage. Line loss, when we talk about losses, we are looking at the power values. Okay, so we are calculating power and those are the losses. That's what we're looking at when we talk about losses. When we talk about line loss, it's all about the power. Because P equals E times I, line loss is affected by the amount of current. Okay, so this is a really important deal. We're going to look at the numbers here in the next few slides. But essentially the, the idea is this okay the voltage is a consistent value okay whatever the power supply offers is what the power supply offers okay but as electrical loads are plugged in or disconnected turned on turned off the amount of current in the circuit continues to vary okay because power is voltage times current as you increase the current in the circuit you increase the amount of power that's being lost as a result and Trust me, we're going to crunch the numbers to prove this, see what this is all about, okay? But when we talk about line drop, it's specifically about the voltage. When we talk about line loss, because it's a power conversation, we're really going to focus on the current, the current draw of whatever loads are plugged into our circuit, okay? Efficiency uh, of a transmission system is the ratio of the power used by the electrical loads, so the resistors, in the circuit, the electrical loads compared to the power supplied by the power supply, and it is expressed as a percentage. Okay, start at the beginning. Line drop or voltage drop is the voltage dropped across the conductors due to its resistance. Okay, so here is a simple little circuit. We have a 120 volt power supply. We have a 12 ohm resistor. Now, first of all, let's go way back to the beginning and let's pretend like there's no resistance in the wire. What would be the result of this, okay, if we do a little bit of math, we would have 120 volts here. This is why this is messy, because I'm doing the best I can with my mouse. 120 volts, okay, uh, divided by 12 ohms of resistance means that we've got 10 amps flowing through our circuit, okay? Now, I don't, I don't want to take this on to power yet. We're going to talk about line loss in a minute. But now these numbers are no longer the correct numbers, right? Because they ignore the fact that there's any resistance in the wire. So once we introduce the fact that there's resistance in the wire, okay, we have to include those numbers. And the easiest way to do this, uh, I did introduce this to you. Some of you guys like to do this. Some of you kind of ignored it. But the, the thing that works best, the tool, the equation, is the fact that a series circuit is a voltage divider, which means the voltage gets dropped across each load in the series circuit um, 
based on the percentage of resistance that that offer that that resistor offers compared to the total. Whew, did I mess that up? What is the total resistance of the circuit we're looking at? It's 12 plus 0.45 plus 0.45. So the total resistance here is 12.9. So if we want to know the voltage dropped across the resistor, the 12 ohm resistor, it's not the full 120 volts, is it? It's 120 volts less the line drop. So if we do, if we do 12 ohms, 12 ohms divided by 12.9 ohms. So 12 ohms is the size of the electrical load. 12.9 ohms is the total resistance of the circuit. Okay, what percentage of that total resistance does that resistor represent? And I have that number here. Uh oh, I had that number here. 12 divided by 12.9 equals 93%. Okay, so this 12 ohm resistor represents 93% of the total resistance of the circuit, which means 93% of the total voltage will get dropped across this resistor. So instead of the full 120, it ends up being just 111.6. Okay, 111.6 ends up being the voltage dropped across this resistor, okay? And now we can do the math, 111.6 volts divided by 12 ohms, and the current in the circuit ends up only being 9.3 amps. 9.3, wow, amps, okay? so. The result is because of the resistance being offered by the conductors in the circuit that that this electrical load is not getting as much voltage, which means it's not drawing as much current, which means it's not doing as much work. OK, so so everything kind of just. I don't want to say peters out, but but there's a reduction in in the ability for this electrical circuit to actually do whatever it is it's supposed to do. OK, so that's that's what the line drop is doing to us, it's creating a series circuit. Okay, now let's move the conversation along to line loss. Okay, line loss is the result of voltage drop, but it is a measure of power. And because power considers both the voltage and the current, the amount of current is a really big deal in the circuit. And so in fact, we can look at one of the other power equations to recognize the the um, significance to which current has in our circuit, so P equals I squared R. Okay, this is this is a power equation that we haven't really looked at very much. When we talk about the power equation, it's always P equals E times I. Okay, but in the conversation about line loss and efficiency, this P equals I squared R equation becomes the main factor that we want to focus on. The equation that we're going to use to really recognize what's happening. It can be said that line loss is related entirely to current and not voltage at all. Okay, voltage kind of becomes secondary in the whole conversation. All right, and so highlighted there is a statement that says, remember, um, this power that we're talking about, um, this line loss, power lost in the line, is all about the production of heat. Okay, so let's look at some numbers. Let's compare a couple of circuits. This one on the bottom left is the same circuit that we've already crunched some numbers on. And then on the right, we see the same circuit, but this time instead of a 12 ohm resistor, we have a six ohm resistor. So remember, a smaller ohmic value represents a larger electrical load, right? It allows more current to flow, or we typically say that it draws more current, okay, which is the equivalent of a larger electrical load, okay? There will be when we calculate the power, there will be more work done as a result of the at sorry at the six ohm resistor rather than the 12 ohm resistor. Smaller ohmic value equals a larger electrical load. So what happens when we look at the numbers? Well, remember uh, with this first one, we had 9.6 amps flowing through this circuit, right? So. Um, when we take 
and go with the I squared R equation. So 9.6 squared times 12 ohms means that there is a little bit more than uh, 11,000 watts is the work being done there. Okay. Over here, uh, we'll have to do the math again now. So this time, look at what happens. This time we have 6 ohms divided by, I'm doing the voltage divider equation. Okay, so we have 6 ohms divided by the total resistance of the circuit, which is 6.9. Okay, and remember, when we did the voltage divider equation in the first circuit, it was, what, about 93%. But when I do 6 divided by 6.9, now we're down to 87%. Okay, so 87% of 120 volts times 120 equals 104. So now there's only 104, 104 volts dropped across this resistor. Remember, this one was 111 ohms. OK, so we're now seeing less voltage dropped across the resistor. OK, now when we take uh, the I squared R equation, we've got 10 point. Sorry, that's 104. We've got 104 uh, volts times six. Oh, we need to square that, don't we? Oh, in fact, never mind. We want the current. So 104, 104 divided by. 6 ohms means we have 17.3 amps. 17.3 amps. Now we can do, we can calculate the power here either way. We can do 17.3 times 104, so there's the volts times amps, gives us 1802. 1802 watts. Or we could do the I squared R equation, which is 17.2 squared times the resistance, which is 6, 17.75. So we're off a little bit. There's been some rounding error. I didn't quite carry enough decimal places. Okay, but we're in more or less the same place. Now, that's a much larger number, okay, because we've got a larger um, electrical load. But let's focus our attention on the power on the lines so back here on this top line 0.45 ohms is the resistance of this wire what's the current here the current here is 9.6 amps okay let's do the i squared r equation here 9.6 amps flowing through a resistor which is 0.45 ohms so 9.6 squared times 0.45 equals 41.47 41.47 watts okay that is the power lost on that wire due to heat okay now let's come over to the other circuit okay same wire same power supply but a larger electrical load there's now 17.3 amps flowing through that wire. So again, I squared R to find out the power on that wire. 17.3, so it's a much larger current, and I'm squaring it, 17.3 squared times that same 0.45 ohms, 134.7. 34.7 watts is the line loss now on that wire. So it was kind of a long way around to get here. I apologize for that. I hope everybody came along for the ride, but here is the point. Okay. So in the first scenario, we lost about 41 and a half watts. Okay, as a result of heat being generated by that wire. Okay, the electrical load changed from a 12 ohm resistor to a 6 ohm resistor. So we can say that we doubled the size of the electrical load. 
doubled the current draw in the circuit, but ended up quadrupling the amount of heat being generated by that wire. Okay, so that's what line loss is all about. That's why I squared R helps us recognize that current is a really big deal and, and line loss um, grows exponentially as the current increases in the circuit. Okay, so that's, that's the point here. That's really the conversation. All right, I, I hope everybody was able to follow that, um, follow that thought process along the way. Okay, so that brings us to the conversation of efficiency. Um, efficiency in the transmission system, there's that weird N, it's called mu. Okay, there's the equation. So it's expressed as a percentage, ex percent mu equals. So it's the, the power of the loads in the circuit divided by the total power. Okay, so I've said there the watts of R1 plus R2 plus R3, etc. So however many loads you have in your circuit, actual resistors that are, that are installed in the circuit to do something, okay, divided by the total power provided by the power supply. And then we multiply that by 100 to turn it into a percentage. Okay, now this, I think what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna stop the PowerPoint here. I'm gonna actually go back to my whiteboard and we're gonna crunch the numbers on this circuit um, on the whiteboard. It's a lot more comfortable than me trying to write numbers with my mouse. But here's the scenario, work on it yourself. See if you can get the numbers before you watch the video. Okay, this is a very real scenario. We've got two loads connected in parallel because that's how we always connect them. And then we know the resistance of the wires that build the circuit. So see if you can do the combination circuit calculations based on this combination circuit. Uh, and ultimately the question is, what is the efficiency of the circuit? Okay, the power of the two resistors. Okay, that's the power output of the circuit, the desired power output. Um, and compare that to the total power provided by the power supply, which is the powers of those two resistors plus all of the heat generated by the wires.